Normally when we see a quadratic equation, we just figure out the coefficients, we plug them into the quadratic formula and get our answer. However, the calculations involved in this method do get tedious at times. And today I would like to show you guys a method that does not require you to memorize any obscure formula or anything like that. It just requires you to understand what a quadratic really is. Let's go. Let's start off with this example here. So we know that an equadratic can be factored into x minus the first solution multiplied by x minus the second solution. Expanding the right hand side and then matching coefficients will give us that the sum of our solutions will be equal to 6 and that the product of our solutions will be equal to 8. I want to use this information in order to find my solutions, but let me first of all take the first equation there a step further. So we know that the vertex of a parabola is precisely in the middle of x1 next to the two solutions. And so that means that its x coordinate is going to be precisely the average of x1 and x2. That is in our case 3. So let me draw all of that stuff out. These are my two solutions and this is the midpoint of the line segment that connects them on the x-axis. And so now I would like to mark the distance connecting the first solution and the midpoint and also the midpoint and the second solution as u. These two are going to be equal in length because the midpoint is exactly in the middle of x1 and x2. Awesome. But now if we manage to find that u of ours, we will actually get our solutions because x1 will be equal to 3 minus that u and x2 will be equal to 3 plus that u. So how do we do that? I would like to use the second fact that we derived at the very beginning, which is that the product of x1 and x2 is going to be equal to 8. I can rewrite it as this thing here. And you're right, this is another quadratic equation. <laughs> However, now it's going to be a little bit more simple. And that's because this thing here is just the difference of squares when we expand this thing out. And now just rearranging stuff and then taking the square root will give us that u is going to be equal to 1. I'm not taking negative 1 as the solution to u into consideration because, well, u was supposed to be a distance, which is a non-negative number. But now if u was equal to 1, then x1 is going to be equal to 3 minus 1, which is 2, and x2 will be equal to 3 plus 1, which is 4. I would like to do one more thing here. I would like to generalize this method in order to derive the quadratic formula itself. So the generalized quadratic equation that looks like this will have two properties by Vieta's formula, stuff like this. We have that the sum of roots is going to be negative b over a, and we have that the product of those two roots is going to be c over a. But now let's just set up that u and that difference of squares again to get that our u is going to be this square rooted expression here. But now recall, we're just supposed to add or subtract this expression from our x coordinate of the vertex to get our solutions. So our solutions, or rather our solution x is going to be the vertex, the x of the vertex plus or minus that square rooted thing. But now if we just get everything to a common denominator, well that's just the quadratic formula. <laughs> so is this thing something new? It is not. Is it cool? It is. So yeah, I like it. Hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next one.